Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday morning trading session. The market's just opened up with a little bit of a gap to the upside. Take a look here at the Eagle. This is on the NASDAQ. Uh, you can see yesterday trading left off here around 47.98. Well, yeah, 47.95, 98, somewhere in that neighborhood anyway. Little itty bitty opening gap here as the market's opening around 48.08, 48.10 in that neighborhood. Uh, this, of course, the Eagle Trend Trader. Just a real quick overview for those of you who might be new in the trading room this morning. Uh, this is the DTS system, and we've got the Hawk Scalper here in the top left. Falcon Swing Trader, top right. Eagle Trend Trader, bottom left, and the Raptor on the bottom right. Uh, this monitor I'm watching... NASDAQ, I've also got crude oil and soybeans going on my other chart, my other monitor. So please don't be shy. If there's something you would like to see, let me know. Crude oil in a little bit of a slide. Here's crude oil on the Eagle, and you can see markets fairly quiet yesterday, but since yesterday's close through the overnight and into this morning's open, slipping a little bit lower. That might weigh on the stock market. The stock indices used to follow crude oil relatively closely. I'm not so sure they do it quite as closely as they used to. All right, well, we're getting a some mixed signals here. We've got a first micro macro cross and a four arrow consolidation building here on the Hawk, but we're into the hard edge on the Eagle and the Raptor. I wonder if we're going to see the market try to get into that opening range gap. We also had a trend change signal here on the Falcon early on. Nice to see Oh, I was going to say <laughs> Nice to see the market setting up for us but not happening at the moment Just a little bit sideways. All right, this may well be a test. Here, let's take a look at the Raptor because uh, this may be a soft edge sell signal for us here on the Raptor. The Raptor, of course, uh, making a high. This could be interpreted as a retest of the high. This is a counter trend signal, so you need to be cautious whenever you're taking a counter trend signal. Signal hasn't printed yet. What I'm looking for is a sell signal and maybe uh, looking for the market to come into this gap that was just below the open. And then again, maybe not. Working a possible trend change here on the Falcon. 
we're getting the hard edge bounce already on the eagle. The raptor is almost ready to give us a buy signal as well. Let's take a look at this signal here on the Falcon. This is our basic trend change signal. It hasn't printed just yet. I'm going to get ready for it. It's going to print, if it prints, it's going to print up there. I'll try to risk it below the median line. The trend change signal, essentially, uh, we're watching the trend line. When the trend line changes color from red to green, that puts us on the alert for a buying opportunity. The trend change signal itself has this type of pattern where we have the push that changes the trend line color from red to green. Then we have the, in this case, the sellers trying to fight the market back. The sellers trying to regain control. In this case, they've only been able to give us a single red bar. And then the buyers coming back and producing the buy signal. That would be our trend change signal, and that tends to be a relatively high probability signal. Currently, again, we're just producing the warning dots. This market may find itself in a rather large trading range. And the Raptor just about to produce our soft edge sell signal. Well, come on now. There it is. So we'll let the signal engage. Oh, it hasn't engaged yet. If it does fill, stop should go above the high. Good morning, Jim. Here's some advanced decline numbers for those of you following that sort of thing. We've got almost 1,900 on the buy and about 760 on the sell. So a slightly bullish flavor to the day. But that, again, is in part due to the opening gap. All right, we have got this market in a bit of a bind now. If it rallies, it's going to produce a uh, double pullback signal. If it fails, we've got our soft edge sell. Now, I'm going to actually just hold my stop back here a little bit above those highs. And what I'm hoping to see is I'm hoping to see the market run out, uh, maybe get down into that gap. And I can cancel this order. So we've got median support here at 48.01 half. It seems like a plausible target. Now also producing a first micro macro cross signal here on the Hawk. You may choose to reserve your entry until we take out the lows rather than enter right on the hash mark or you have a chance at a second push entry now as well. The second push entry simply means we allow the signal to print and then we see what the current limit of the signal is. So prices came down retreated a little bit. Now we're into yellow bars. So we're going to ignore that on the hawk. All right, last chance for the bears to get busy.
Yeah, it's, um, Stephen says, uh, yesterday was such a big down day, I think we should think long all day. It's definitely a possibility, Stephen. It used to be that if we had a rally day, either higher or lower, you could anticipate a couple of rally days, usually in a row. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Now what tends to happen is we get a rally day and then the next day kind of goes flat or sideways. The NASDAQ has always been a difficult market to short. Certainly long term, even short term sometimes it seems. <laughs> We might be getting a little bit of a trend line reaction there, a little bit of early selling. There we go. Okay, so we've got at least uh, a little bit of a confirmation that the sellers have stepped up here. So I'm going to adjust my stop a little bit more aggressively now. It's a little early and... Hopefully I'm not getting a little too quick with my stops. Jim's freshened up those advanced decline numbers. It's about 1750 on the buy and 900 on the sell. So getting a slight bearish tint on the morning, but not so much yet. Oh, there we go. We're going to see them try to break out higher now. Okay. Well, I'm not terribly disappointed with that. It was worth a try. Hopefully we're not going to see them rally lower in a big hurry. Lots of congestion, lots of yellow bars. Remember when you see yellow bars printing are more or less the same level. That's telling you that the market is sideways. It's in chop. And the best course of action when you're in chop is to let the market get outside the chop. Right? Anything within here is going to be a relatively difficult trade to take. Why? Well, because you've got buyers buying down here. You've got sellers selling up here. And you can see where the middle third falls. It's no man's land, really. So, best course of action, allow the market to break out and then prove to you that it can stay out. Look for that retest, and likewise to the upside. Let it break out, allow it to retest, and then look for that buying opportunity. And here on the short.
short side, we would look for that cell signal to develop. This is a very, very congested market. The other thing you could do, of course, is you could bracket the trade. You know, we've got obvious highs here. We've got obvious lows there. We could use our OCO order and we could enter a buy order above and a sell order below. Don't want to have these too tight. Give ourselves a couple of the ticks. Have a stop. Be ready to go. And just allow the market to fill us on a breakout and hope that the breakout sticks. And of course, you could have done a similar thing on any of the tools. We're seeing the same kind of sideways action here across the board. Now the hawk giving us a f possible first micro macro cross. Warning dots anyways. And now we're back into yellow bars. So a very content market at the moment. Back into the hard edge here on the Eagle. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder, is this going to end up being like a bull flag type setup? Here comes the red bar buy signal. Now this particular red bar buy, I'm going to take a look at taking it early, perhaps off of a second push. Now the reason I took a look at buying it early instead of waiting for the ATR to turn over, which you could have done as well, actually, given that the bar finishing at 48, 12, three quarters, we're not sacrificing that much. But we've got these highs right here. And sometimes it's to your advantage to try to enter a little bit early so that as the market approaches the highs, maybe you have an opportunity to adjust your stop somewhat. So we've got a little bit of a bull flag type thing going on. And we'll see, we definitely need to see this bar finish higher. Uh, Keith asks, can you do an OCO type trade with the with the Trailblazer? Now the Trailblazer uh, is a little bit different because it does not have that risk manager function. You simply right click, you simply right click on your chart and then place your order. Now unlike the uh, OCO function on the and why did that happen? Okay, 
let's try that again. So the difference, of course, with the OCO function, uh, the other order will aut automatically cancel. With the Trailblazer, when you enter your order above and below, and I'm just simulating this, of course, the breakout has already happened. If we get filled to the long side, you'll need to manually close out the short trade. That's the only real difference. Okay, so here we are testing the top end of the range again. Uh, you may be right, Stephen. We might see a bullish day today. Come on, let's go. There we go. Okay, so obviously I'm not too disappointed with the earlier stop out that we took here. On the rafter, you actually had a couple of chances for um, a double pullback signal. Actually turned out to be a triple pullback signal. So here's signal one. And then the market comes down again, bounces off of the hard edge yet again, and then produces, we're just gonna call both these here, signal two because they're printing so close together, they're essentially the same. And then the market comes down one more time and bounces yet again and produces a third signal. The, the concept is still the same, however. The whole point of the double pullback signal is the market tries to test the support. In this case, the support. The opposite would obviously be true in a uh, uptrending market, or pardon me, a downtrending market. So the market tests a couple of times, and then the support seems to hold. Therefore, it's going to try to head higher. A, a great case as well for why you don't want to keep your stops overly tight. right? If you saw that as your double pullback, which it is, and you chose to enter on the hash mark, you, well, at the very least, your stop should go below here. But watch what happens. The market comes, tags you out, and then goes higher. Right? So don't keep your stops ultra tight. Give yourself a little bit of room because the market will fudge the highs and the lows by a tick or two looking for those what are known as weak buyers. You don't want to be a weak buyer. You want to be a strong buyer. You don't want to get tapped out with the, with the other guys. All right, so the eagle has since hit our break-even trigger, and hopefully we're going to see them continue a little bit higher here. Geiger counter.
counter starting to pull over here to the short side. I don't want to see that. Crude oil price is also making a rather quick move higher, however, no real opportunity to take advantage of that. Just unfolded too quickly. Now we're producing a first micro macro cross here in crude. I wouldn't suggest taking it right on the hash mark. For a couple of ticks, you can enter above the high. There's a problem with crude though. It's a difficult market to afford. Not a lot of structure on that trade. All right, well here come the sellers again. Buyers got to dig in in a hurry, otherwise this breakout is going to fail. Jim says the advanced decline numbers are jumping all over. Now we've got 1,800 on the buy and 900 on the sell. That little spike higher kind of skewed the advanced decline, but I've been watching the Geiger counter here. While the needle itself is very neutral, we've seen some interesting conflicts here. The market has pulled hard to the sell side. See how it sticks and chews? That's telling me that there's a lot of sell orders hitting the floor. And then you see it pull here to the buy side. See, and it's holding, it's holding, it's holding. Oh, and now it pulls to the short side and it's holding. There is a serious conflict going on on this bar. There we go. All right. Hooray for us. So we're just about to hit our profit objective here on the Eagle. And at the very least, you could bring your stops up here. You could perhaps even go with something more aggressive, uh, rolling your stops just under here.
Come on. Don't stop now. Oh, you stinkers. There we go. That's all you get. <coughs> Pardon me. You get one bar. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they're going to leave me hanging here for one tick. See, that's my my tick or two that I lost here on the entry side. That's my profit target right there. Get up there. All right, I'm gonna, I have no choice. i got to pull out the magic mouse here. We're going to push the market up a little bit. Hopefully we're not too late to get it to move. Come on, get up there. Oh, sorry, folks. A little bit too late on that one, but still managed a tidy profit on that. Not too disappointing. draw a little trend line here on the eagle if you wanted, just like that. Oh, while well, that was going on, I had a macro pullback signal here on the hawk. Opportunity for a little scalp. On a possible retest. So I mean, putting it, putting in a pretty strong morning. Hooray! I've got a long position in soybeans, so it's nice to see them rallying. Trend mode for the better part of two hours. I sure hope that's right. So pretty much out of the open. Soybeans relatively quiet in the overnight, and kind of conflicted yesterday. But so far, nice little rally. I do tend to stretch my profit objective with soybeans.
right, so you can see they're settling here on some trend line support. We'll see whether or not that bounces them or whether we're going to see them try to head lower. You can tell from the width of some of these bars, we're getting a lot of volume coming through here. And the Geiger counter holding hard to the buy side again, so we'll see whether we get some support come in. And another rally, or... Are the sellers going to take the market away? 4820 apparently a bit of a sensitive area for the market back into another macro pullback here on the hawk that's interesting because we typically only see two macro pullbacks within a trend sometimes if the trend is really strong we'll get three very rarely will we get four solid macro pullback signals so this may be an indication that the market's starting to unwind to the short side. Here on the Raptor, we've had our retest of the high. Uh, if you wanted, you could consider this an opportunity to short. It'd be a little bit more aggressive because normally our retests look more like this, right? Where they don't exceed the high. But the principle remains the same. It shows you a market that is struggling to get higher and unable to do so. Pardon me. All right, the hawk now into yellow bars. And now we're producing a red bar buy. Here the Raptor producing that sell signal. So let's take a look at doing that as a possible soft edge sell. And stops again should go above the highs. And I'll just hold them there for a little bit because that's going to tell us whether we're right or wrong about this trade. Very likely we will see a retest of this high and possibly another failure. Markets don't turn on a dime. Crude 
loyal, dead client. It, <laughs> it's making me wonder if my data feed is on. Yeah, I'm just checking that. Uh, Tony asked, what contract are you trading in crude? Well, currently I'm in October. And I thought October was still good for another week, but maybe I should be in November. Uh, October crude expires, so it expires in today. That explains it. All right. Let me fix that up. Crude always sneaks up on me because it's a month ahead. There's an interesting little tidbit. Jim says, uh, per Larry Williams data, 88% chance or historical chance that the market will be down today and tomorrow. All right, well, so far the buyers are certainly struggling and the or Sellers seem to be getting a little bit stronger. We're back now into the hard edge. Almost to our break even trigger. So remember, whenever we encounter the hard edge, we always anticipate some sort of reaction. So I'm trying not to get too quick with my stops. Okay, come on down. All right, so far our Raptor trade making good progress. Nice little shot in the arm there on the down tick. The are still seeming to be in control. Okay, now we're getting closer to the lows of the day, and we just watched at the Geiger counter here. I saw it pulling toward the buy side a little bit. If we do see the market take out the low, then I think we will see it fill that gap, which should see prices trade, well, at least to 4,800. 
maybe even down to 47.95. Way to go, Stephen. Stephen says, I've already had two nice longs and now the market's giving me a gift and maybe a third long when the market turns. It's, um, it's certainly possible, Stephen, but sometimes it's helpful to step back a little bit. I hope we're not going to be entering a little bit of a sideways range here. But of course, if it is a sideways range, you still do have an opportunity to go long again, don't you? All right, well, I guess it would be prudent to take at least take this stop to break even. There we go. And, you know, again, your let your pocketbook be your guide. There's $100, 115 available for you. Don't be don't be greedy. If the market is ranging, then that may be all we're going to get. But I'm going to see whether or not we can't get into that gap down here. It's calling me. Or maybe it's the gap between my ears. All right, possible cloud crossover working here on the Raptor. So looking for the cloud now to offer resistance to the market and hopefully spit it out lower. Crude's got a long ways to go then. Uh, Jim says uh, he believes crude oil will be long when and if it can take out Friday's highs at 44.95. That's a long ways away from where they're trading right now at around 43.50. Got a little bit of buying going on here on the Geiger counter. Look at how they're pulling over and sticking. Oh, they're doing the same thing to the short side, which is good for our position.
So if we can see the market take out the lows here, I'll become a little bit more aggressive with my stops, perhaps change to a parabolic strategy or even the bar high low. Bar high low is a great strategy as well. It keeps you close, takes you out on the first sign of weakness. The Geiger counter really, I don't know if you noticed that, was really stuck over here on the, on the buy side. Jim, you almost seem surprised. <laughs> Here's a little opinion from, from Jim. He says, it's a shame how the market is so addicted to the Fed BS. <laughs> the Fed has totally controlled the marketplace at the media level. That's not news. <laughs> One of the uh, commentaries I read, uh, the fella says he isn't bearish but he is totally bearish on his commentaries he's looking for a rather substantial correction and of course the stock indices keep going higher so it's you know really important to try to keep an open mind and to trade what you see the markets are going to do what the markets are going to do that's the thing about economics for every economist that says things, well, the economists by default always say things are bad. But for every economist who says the world's going to come apart at the seams next week, there's another one who says everything is just fine. says Harry Dent, he's been short for 10 years. asks, uh, how many economists does it take to change a light bulb? None. They wait for the market to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny.
come on here. My goodness, we're waffling. <laughs> Getting a few few comments here. Yeah, Stephen says uh, George Bush called it voodoo economics. Yes, I remember something like that. Well, might be getting that push again off the bottom end of the trading range. comes that second rally. Come on now. Be nice. Yeah, see this hard edge. The hard edge on the trading band. You can always anticipate some sort of reaction when the market gets down there. I hope my break-even stop is, is going to hold. You can see my break-even stop at 48.12 quarter. We've got primary resistance here at 48.13, kind of pushing the envelope a little bit. Getting a four arrow consolidation and a macro pullback here in the uh, Hawk. Uh, problem is it's very likely we could see a retest of the high. You could look for a second push on this entry. You could offer a couple of ticks on the short side. Kind of throwing all my eggs in the short basket here.
Well, things don't get much quieter than they are right now. Jim says the bank index and the DAX also kind of weak, so we'll see whether or not that pulls the market down or not. I'm still thinking that opening gap is calling the market. Possible late filter entry signal here on the Falcon. So we're getting a few things sinking up a little bit. So you can see we've got the warning dot. The filter not in sync yet, but I know that if this bar finishes on the low, it's going to produce a filter change. See? And we've also printed our signal. I've just allowed an extra tick to try to take it um, on a trend line break. Come on down, there we go, we hit our break even trigger, and come on, oh, whew. oh, that was hard work. All right, so that late filter entry signal coming through, I do believe we hit our profit objective on the four arrow consolidation, yes we did, and I should get more aggressive with my stops here. Let's go with the bar high low, we haven't done that one for a little while, and we'll try to protect a little bit more of our open profit as the NASDAQ tries to fill that opening gap. So we hit the 4,800 mark. We'll see if it gets down to 47.95, which would totally fill the gap. Hmm. That's a uh, that's a very interesting observation, Stephen. Um, it's a it's a little bit of a long post, but if you bear with me here, I'm going to read Stephen's uh, comment. You can tell uh, Stephen's got a little bit of an economics background. We open up the economics can o' worms, <laughs> but <clears throat> excuse me, Stephen uh, says regarding uh, I was raised on the trickle down theory, but it turns out that Republicans and their trickle-down does not work, and let me explain why. If you make 10 million and are taxed 40%, 2 million goes toward the government and military, and 2 million towards 20 jobs for police, firemen, and teachers. Now, if the tax rate goes to 20%, America loses 20 jobs. Now, for the man that makes 10 million now, has 2 million more, and what will he do with it? He'll put it in the stock market and let's say his fee is 2%. 2% of 2 million is $40,000 and that's one low level secretary's job. So with the trickle down, he gave up 20 jobs and only got one back. Very interesting. And you can tell that uh, election season is just around the corner. <laughs> It's going to be a very interesting election this year, I have to say.
All right, so we got uh, tapped on that little bit of a reversal, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Yeah, um, Jim makes an interesting point too. He says, how about the velocity of money? The elite are not taxed enough to support the creation of new jobs in tech. That's always the issue in any society, right? That everybody pays their fair share. And uh, the wealthy are always eyed with <laughs> covetous eyes, shall we say, especially by the government and the lower classes, of course. But the problem is that the wealthy have options. Anything that the government does to the tax structure always affects the lower and middle class, not the not the upper crust. Yeah, Stephen uh, makes a comment, and Warren Buffett knows this, and that's why he wants a 50% tax rate for the wealthy. And you know what? I, I, in all honesty, I think most wealthy people when i say wealthy i mean the extreme wealthy people in the world don't mind paying taxes right you know like uh, i heard the beatles in their heyday mccartney and lennon and and uh george and ringo they were all paying 95 percent tax to the british government now i don't know if that's just urban myth or if that's fact and I'm sure they resented paying 95%, but I don't know. And I know a few wealthy people that they don't mind paying their taxes. And again, when we say wealthy, or when I'm saying wealthy, I mean extreme wealth. Kind of people that own their own airplane kind of wealth. All right, so we did get down to the 47.95 mark, not quite, 47.96, close enough though to consider that morning gap to be filled. <laughs> yeah, uh, Stephen says, my velocity of money is 100% per, per paycheck. <laughs> Yeah, zoom out the bank account. Just as quick as it comes in, it goes out. I hear ya. <laughs> oh dear. All right, well. We saw a decent move higher and a decent move lower this morning. Uh, which way the market's going to tip from here is is a tough call. I almost think we're in a much larger trading range. You know, if we go back here to yesterday's lows, kind of shoot a trend line across there. I think we're pretty close. Oh, we actually breach that trend line slightly. Might see a reaction there. The market could come up here. We'd be right for a trend change signal on the Eagle. Let's just see if we can draw a channel in here. And again, the only reason I draw trend lines on here is to see what other traders are are seeing. There we go. That's a little bit more channel-ish. If this is going to turn into a rather broad trading range. We might be due for uh, an uptick.
at least a short term uptick. Well, we might be might be waiting for a little while again. So they're still floundering. We are getting a macro pullback. Once again, this would be our second macro pullback within this trend. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, macro pullbacks, we normally only see two within a trend. So looking for that to get into yellow bars so I don't have to worry about it. Here's another thing you could do since we're drawing trend lines. You could also draw a trend line across the highs. So the Falcon already getting a little bit more bullish. We're getting a one bar trend line change anyhow. The Hawk now into yellow bars. Crude oil dead flat. Soybeans probably the rock star today. Nice rally out of the open. I think that would have hit the profit objective, my enlarged profit objective. Yes, it did. So let's put this away.
very, very balanced. I think crude oil perhaps showing it best. Crude oil fairly sideways today and fairly quiet for the most part. Did get a four arrow consolidation, which is rare. Normally we only get three arrows in crude, but regardless, three or four. Uh, decent follow through lower. First micro macro cross signal and they're still fighting trying to get higher on that. Possible green bar sell here on the Hawk. But as we saw, the market's kind of at a uh, area of trend line resistance. So of course the option is there for the market to break higher or move lower. If you wanted to do this, uh, I would suggest probably just going in with a single so it doesn't hurt you too badly if it goes south on you. Alternatively, you can look to buy the... So it's a sell signal and we should see a retest of the low here, but you could also set up to buy it in case it's in fact heading higher. Oh, you're absolutely correct, uh, Russell. Hold on a second. Sorry, I didn't point that out. I... Russell, you're absolutely correct. Russell saying, wasn't that just a three arrow consolidation on oil? Excellent observation. You're absolutely correct. So even had the nice little bull flag to it. One, two, three signals right there. And there's the follow through. Yeah, well done. Well, they are conflicted, I have to say. Well, if they don't get something going on here soon, I think we're going to button up the trading room at the top of the hour.
here come the sellers trying to engage that green bar sell, trying to take control of the market before we get to the top of the hour here. So the Hawk, or pardon me, the Falcon, uh, starting to look a little bit more bullish. The, the Hawk could turn either way from here. As I mentioned, you could short the green bar cell. You can also set up to buy the failure of it. Sometimes I almost think those are safer. You could consider this a four arrow consolidation as well. Even though this signal here did not print, the principle is still there. This would also be our second four arrow consolidation within the trend. And like most of our signals, see them print over and over again. So which way are you guys going to go? See this hard edge is really mucking things up for us. There we go. Let's see if we get a little scalp out of the the hawk here, breaking the green bar cell signal. Oh, the action I can hardly contain myself.
Well, as suspenseful as this is, I think uh, we're going to button up the room here. Uh, I'm going to try to nurse this trade to at least its break even, hopefully even its profit objective. Uh, obviously, we need to take out this little itty bitty swing high that we've encountered around the 48.07 ish line. If we get above that, I think we'll be all right. We'll probably see the market try to retest these highs and then either enter into a sideways range or perhaps even turn lower once again. Oh, there we go. We're making progress. A uh, reminder that uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, we are going to meet at the open house room. If you don't already, if you aren't already on that mailing list, you can go to the indicatorwarehouse.com website and click on the link for free trade room. Enter your name and email address there, and you'll automatically be added to the uh, to the notification. All right, you guys and girls, we will see you tomorrow morning. We'll talk to you then. Bye for now.